What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how the tools in Illustrator on the iPad stack up against a Fiend Designer on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator. You know, we've been doing this series as we've gone along looking at each of the Adobe programs versus their affinity counterparts, specifically looking at the tools inside of each. These are the tools that are along the left-hand side in the toolbar in each program. And it's easy to compare because each of these programs puts their tools in the same spot and divides them up very similarly. What we don't do is look at every single feature that exists inside of these programs. We do try and take a look where similar functionality may be somewhere that's not in the tools, but we don't always get to everything. And we don't take a look at all of the panels and all of the menu options. This is really just about the tools. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump over to the iPad version. A lot of people in the comments on the desktop version, they really expressed interest in knowing how the iPad version stacked up against each other. So we're going to go ahead, jump in and check that out. Before doing that, I just want to know a couple of things. One, the Illustrator iPad version is pretty new. It's a lot newer than the Affinity designer version but it is based on the decades old program illustrator on the desktop so it hasn't had maybe as long a time to catch up on the iPad so we might see some places where it's a little bit weaker where in the desktop version of this video it was a little bit stronger the second thing to note is that illustrator comes with the creative cloud bundle so if you're paying that $53 a month you get illustrator on the iPad if you have an iPad you can use it if you don't have an iPad obviously you can't, but you get it along with your Creative Cloud bundle. It's not any kind of extra charge. Whereas Affinity Designer on the iPad is a separate purchase app. It doesn't come along with Affinity Designer on the desktop. You have to purchase it separately. It's only 20 bucks, it's a one-time purchase, but I just wanted to note those differences there. Both of these programs are vector design programs. They're aimed at people who are trying to do graphic design and illustration primarily, although they can be used for other purposes as well. So let's go ahead, let's dive in, and let's look at the tools in each of these programs and how they stack up against each other. Okay, so. So here we are on the iPad and unfortunately Affinity Designer does not support multitasking so I can't show Affinity Designer and Illustrator side by side except in this slide overview. So I guess that's kind of the first win for Illustrator here. It supports some forms of multitasking on the iPad and Affinity Designer doesn't. But that doesn't really have to do with tools which is what we're talking about today. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. We are in the designer persona here in Affinity Designer. So the first tool is the move tool and this of course allows us to click on things and move them around. Around. In Illustrator, the first tool is the selection tool. It's basically the same thing. Move, transform, all of those basic functions are here within each of these tools. For all intents and purposes, they're the same. Similarly, the next tool, the node tool and the direct selection tool will both allow you to select individual points and move them around. In Illustrator, you have to tap on it twice to get that. So those tools are basically the same. Now in Affinity Designer, we then have the Point Transform tool. This allows you to move the central point of your shape and then transform based on that point. Now in Illustrator on the desktop, you can do something very similar, but I couldn't find a way to do something like that in Illustrator on the iPad. There may be a way and I just don't know it. To me, this doesn't seem like it's any kind of a super important tool. It's just a nice feature to have if you need it. Next, we have what's called the contour tool. And the contour tool lets you offset the path of the shape that you're working with. So you can actually make it larger or smaller while still having the path actually remain the same. This is a very new tool in Affinity Designer and there are some uses for it, but I haven't really found any super compelling case for it in my workflow yet, but some people may really like it. There's nothing like that that I could find inside of Illustrator. Of course, Illustrator on desktop has an offset path function. That's not a tool, but will actually allow you to offset the path as a separate shape while expanding it or shrinking it. And I haven't been able to find that inside of Illustrator on the iPad. So I'm not sure if that's there. If you know, go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know. Next, we have the corner tool. Tool. And the corner tool just allows you to select corners and round them. And there isn't a corner tool in Illustrator on the iPad, but when you select something with the direct selection tool, you get the corner option. So it's there, just the same. It's just not broken out into a separate tool, which is interesting because on the desktop version, we saw a lot more of that in Illustrator where things were broken out into their own specific tools. And here in the iPad, we're not seeing that as much, which may be an interesting signal for the way Adobe is trying to go. Next we have the pencil tool and the pencil tool allows you to freeform draw and the pencil tool over in Illustrator allows you to do the same thing, freeform draw. Oh, but we have a fill, so let's 
get rid of that fill. Okay, so you can freeform draw with both of those pencil tools, no difference. One thing to note here though is that if you hold on the pencil tool in Illustrator, you do get the blob brush tool. Nothing like the blob brush tool is found in a fan designer. So basically the blob brush tool just turns this into a shape whatever you draw and there isn't anything like that in a fan designer but there is the vector brush tool which allows you to draw very similar to the pencil tool but it just allows you to have different types of vector brushes there as well and there is kind of this hack workaround where people use the vector brush tool to do things like the blob brush tool but it's really kind of janky and not natural so i wouldn't consider this any kind of a replacement for the blob brush tool but Illustrator does not have anything like the vector brush tool. So they each have things that the other one doesn't have. Okay, next we have a basic tool. Let me just move this a little bit here. Delete that and that. Next we have the pen tool. So this works exactly like you'd expect. You're just going to draw out some Bezier curves there and make a shape. And of course, in Illustrator, we have one exactly like that as well, where we can just draw our shape. So very similar functions in the pen tool. And you'll notice that Illustrator in this version, unlike the desktop, has not broken out that pen tool into like four different tools. There's just one tool to do everything very similar to Affinity Designer. So it does seem like Illustrator is taking lessons from Affinity Designer as they're developing these iPad apps. All right, next we have the fill tool. And the fill tool is used to draw gradients. And Illustrator does not have a fill tool or a gradient tool on the iPad version. Even though, of course, there is a gradient tool in the desktop version, there isn't one here. And that is because the ability to add a gradient is just found inside of the properties panel. So under fill, and then you just choose gradient, and then you can make a gradient. One thing to note here is the third option under gradient is actually a freeform gradient. Then you have the option to add in all different types of points on your gradient and to work that way. And so that is something that Illustrator can do. It's not really a separate tool, but it, it kind of functions like a tool and that it can be quite useful. And Affine Designer doesn't have anything like that. Next, in a similar vein, you have the transparency tool. This just allows you to set different like gradient transparencies across your shapes. And so that allows you to have parts that are more or less opaque. And Illustrator doesn't have a transparency tool, but also in the gradient options in the properties panel, you can choose to set up transparencies as well. So really it's doing the same thing. Okay, next we have the vector crop tool. And the vector crop tool just allows you to crop out parts of a vector shape non-destructively. It's acting very much like a clipping mask and Illustrator doesn't have a vector crop tool. I'm not sure if it really needs one. It does prove useful sometimes, but it's not necessary because you can achieve the same result using a clipping mask. Okay, then we get to the shape tools. And if you remember from the desktop version, this is really where Affinity shines because there are tons of shape tools, all kinds of things. Whereas when we get to Illustrator, Illustrator still is sticking with its old tried and true four shapes. That's all you get, nothing else. And I, I don't know why they're doing that. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard for them to give us more options in the shapes. You'll just have to make your own shapes. But a good thing to bring up here is that as far as the shape builder tool goes, which if you don't know what the shape builder tool is, it allows you to merge shapes together. So let's go ahead and select uh, two shapes here. And we don't have the shape builder tool in the tools on the left hand side, but we do have it underneath this pathfinder option right here. So we can choose to use shape builder instead of one of the pathfinder options. And then we can combine our shapes together that way. So that's there, of course, that doesn't exist in Affine Designer, but Affine Designer does allow you to combine shapes. Just show you here. using the menu option. So you can merge those together using that. So you can achieve very similar results in both programs. So next we have the text tool here in Affine Designer. And there are two different options here. There's the art text tool and the frame text tool. Art text means that it won't use a bounding box and create multiple lines. And frame text says that whatever you set as the frame, it will use that as a bounding box and then it will create multiple lines. Whereas over here in Illustrator, you have the type tool and the vertical type tool. And so it's just a little bit different in that Affine Designer doesn't have anything you can do for vertical type and Illustrator just has the type tool and the vertical type tool, no artistic type tool. And that can seem interesting until you find out that you do have the option within the properties panel to actually change the text container to point text, which will essentially do the same thing as artistic text tool. You can make it bigger or smaller without having to go in and actually change the font size. So very similar in that regard. 
And then lastly, here in Affinity Designer, we have the color picker tool, which of course allows you to pick up any colors. In Illustrator, that would normally be called the eyedropper tool. It looks like it's not there, but it actually is found just inside of the color wheel here. So then you can get your color picker and then you can go around. Obviously, this isn't quite working very well because of how small my screen has to be here, but it works fine. The other thing to note here is that you do have under the edit panel, you have the copy appearance and paste appearance options, which are more powerful than just picking up colors. So Illustrator does have that functionality here. You just don't see it right off the bat. Okay, lastly, before we move into a few things that are present in Illustrator, but not in Affinity Designer, let's go ahead and just note that there are these other personas in Affinity Designer, like the Pixel Persona, which has a lot of tools very similar to a Photoshop or Affinity Photo. None of those are, of course, present in Illustrator, so it is a more powerful program that way. And then lastly, there's this Export Persona, which allows you to do slices. So let's go ahead and take a look at just a few tools in Illustrator that don't have any options in Affinity Designer. So we already talked about the blob brush tool. Next to that, you'll find the eraser tool. And the eraser tool just allows you to divide shapes like this. And that functionality, you really have to kind of hack your way around that. I talked about that in the desktop video, so I won't go into how you would do that here because it is a little bit more involved. Other than that, we also have the import tool, which is this little picture here. So that will allow you to import different photos and files. And in Fiend Designer, it's interesting, there isn't a tool on the iPad version, even though there is on the desktop version, but we do have that option right here under the menu and then place image. So very similar functionality that way. Also right above that in Illustrator, you have the artboard tool. And this is another tool that exists on the desktop version of Affinity Designer, but not in the same way on the iPad version. So there isn't an artboard tool, which would normally be found under the move tool or next to it. But we do have the artboard option right here in the menu. And so that essentially can do the same thing. So mostly they have very similar functionality, just sometimes you have to look for them in different places. Okay, so that's going to wrap this up. As you can see, Affinity Designer is at this point, the more robust program. It's existed longer, it has more tools, more functionality. I really think that Affinity Designer on the iPad is meant for doing professional vector work, whereas it still feels like Adobe Illustrator is more meant as like something you can work on, but they really expect you to finish it on the desktop, which of course is pretty easy to do given the cloud options that are available in Adobe Creative Cloud. You can just save to the cloud and then open it up on your desktop version very easily. So it's just a little bit different. They're purpose feels a little bit different. So I do feel like this one probably goes to Affinity Designer, but remember you would have to buy that separate, whereas Adobe Illustrator on the iPad is already going to come with your Creative Cloud subscription if you're already subscribing to that. But it is definitely not something I would say go out and subscribe to the Creative Cloud just to get access to Adobe Illustrator on the iPad because it's just not that complete of a program yet. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you found it helpful in determining which of these programs might be right for you or in just knowing which features are available to you when you are using these programs. If you have thoughts on this, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. And of course, let me know other types of videos that you'd like to see as well. Don't forget that I have lots of courses on Skillshare all about Affinity Designer and other Affinity programs, and I'll link to all of those in the description of this video. So if you'd like to support this channel and learn something new, go ahead and check those out as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.